Hi, I'm Donia. I'm in grade 11. Yeah. <laughs> so, I attach so many memories and feeling to each part of my home. They weigh me down when I'm in the space. They make me feel stuck in the past. I act the way they make me feel. The way the memories I have of the place creates the mood and feelings. The way I connect to the space. I'm now painting these parts of my house, painting them as though they visibly contain these realities I want to live in and feel. As soon as I began, I understood that in creating different versions of the rooms in my paintings, I could add intention to translate the way I saw the room in reality. I truly believe that if you can create something in your mind, then it can be created into your reality. From there, I decided that if, it, if I created something physical that would make me see my house differently, it could manifest into the way I felt and acted in each room, generating better relationships with my home and my parents. I use specific colors due to how I interpret their frequencies, and I use them to transform the space so that they only contain the energies I wish to feel. This process helps me make peace with the room and the memories that accompany it as I draw it out and pay attention to each detail it contains. So to explain how I've gotten to this understanding of why I make my art, I'll start with last year's work in grade 10. I never truly understood the meaning of the word concept for the meaning behind your work. Throughout grade 10, I would create a meaning or a concept for my art before I'd even made the piece, and then I would try to create something around the idea I had thought of beforehand. This did not work in my favor. I would end up not enjoying the process of making the piece and wouldn't like the way the product would look. In grade 10, I started doing my projects by what I wanted the piece to look like, and only worked on things that made me feel good while I was making them. Throughout this process, I found that I really enjoyed what I really enjoyed making, and I hadn't attached any meaning behind it yet. This was a first for me in the program, and it felt right. I figured out that the meaning for the piece was in why I was making it. I realized later that the reason why I was making the piece was the meaning itself, and that was the way I could make the most effective art. My first piece is physical evidence of my range of self-control. The process was a practice for exploring all sides of control in my mind. I start the painting by letting go of self-control, which is something I have trouble in my day-to-day -day life. I found myself being very held back when I was making anything, because I was afraid of making mistakes. This is something I still struggle with, in my reality, but throughout creating more of these paintings, I've gotten used to taking risks and letting myself go, even when I'm making something. The process starts with a pencil drawing on a wood panel. I turn away from the panel, and I start drawing without looking at what I'm making. This was challenging for me. I would want to look at what I was drawing to make sure it looked good, so I tallied up every time I would look at what I was drawing each day. Every day, I would tr try to lower the number of tallies, this way, I was teaching myself how to let go of control. I would let myself be free and let the lines I was drawing go wherever they wanted to go without judgment. This was, very, this was a very important process because it was teaching me how to allow, let go, and be okay with whatever happened. The next step was the complete opposite. I would paint in between each line, making sure to control the paint into its designated, designated space. This tedious process tested my patience and allowed me to control how the painting looked with the colors that I put into each space. This was letting me control what I couldn't control before, testing how my actions can affect the uncontrollable. Before painting in between the lines, the piece looked like chaos, but once I finished the last step, the piece came together and you could finally see how the chaos I had created came together into something beautiful. This was the first piece that had made me feel like I made a true impact in my day-to-day -day life. There was a period during grade 11 and the beginning of grade 11 where I couldn't get myself to make anything. The self-control I had been cultivating through my paintings vanished, and I couldn't control my thoughts or actions. Finally, I got the courage to make something, whether it be good or bad. I forced myself to make another painting, and the state of allowing I put myself into while making the painting led me to my next series. Letting go and being in the moment without judgment was what, I, what got me inspired for my next painting. I was still forcing myself to make work, and one day I knew I needed to make something to get out of the block I was feeling. Something, I cannot tell you what, compelled me to take a photo of my parents' room, specifically my mom's side of the room. I then drew this out on a wood panel and started drawing um, and painting whatever I felt would make the room more beautiful and interesting to the eye. The finished product was a version of the room that I created and loved. 
The next time I went into my parents' room, I already noticed a change in perception of especially my mom's side of the room, which also translated into the way I felt about her. It reminded me of when I was younger and I would draw out what I would call my dream home, which was a house that only consisted of everything that made me feel whole. There's so much we can't see but can feel when we enter a room. It's like you can feel every feeling someone has felt in that space. Houses and rooms and the rooms in them make me feel a certain way based on the meaning I give that room and that translates into the way I act in them and the types of relationships I have in the space. This process was a, I was doing was very similar to another process I do in my day-to-day -day life where I control my reality with my thoughts and emotions. I can believe that my reality is malleable enough to the point where only my thoughts and beliefs have the power to change my external reality. I do this process through meditation and writing, and now I was doing it through my paintings. In my next painting, I intended to change the way I felt about the room where I spent the most time with my parents, which is the dining room. Throughout painting, I made peace with all my past emotions to the room, based on the memories I had in them. I then created a new version of the room, which was the one I preferred to experience, where only compassion, empathy, and understanding existed. None of my past emotions I felt in that room were allowed in this new version of reality I was creating. Right as I was finished painting, I was having a very rough time with my family and my relationships. Um, and one night at dinner, we were having a very important discussion, and I noticed myself being much more empathetic, having compassion towards my parents, and I was finally understanding their side of the story. This is how I wanted to feel inside this room as I was painting and it translated, it translated into the way I felt in the room. And in turn, my parents were reacting the way I wanted them to. My reality was being changed because of my art, and that was my goal for this series. I use art as a tool for self-growth and self-evaluation. It helps me test the boundaries of my mind and see if I can retrain my mind through the work I make. I want to continue creating parallel realities in my art and use it as a technique to bring me to my highest state of being. I want the process for my art and how it affects my own life to impact the viewer and give them the belief that they are in control. My intention with this talk is that it impacted you in that way. Thank you for listening.